Hi everybody, and welcome back to more Political Excess. I've got yet another deep dive into an upcoming governor's election, and this time we're going to take a look at Oregon. But as always, we'll first get some background about this and start on Ballotpedia. And the incumbent governor is Democrat Kate Brown, and she is term limited from running for re-election. So it is an open seat, and it is technically a three-way race. And the nominee for the Democrats is Tina Kotek, and she spent about 15 years in the Oregon House of Representatives, including serving as the Speaker. And the Republican nominee is Christine Drazen, and Drazen also served a few years in the Oregon House. And there is a third independent candidate, Betsy Johnson, and she served time in both the Oregon State Senate and the State House. So let's move on and take a look at their primaries. Well, on the Democratic side, Tina Kotek did have a semi-competitive primary, but she did win pretty comfortably with 56% of the vote. And on the Republican side, that was a competitive primary. Many candidates were running in that race. Christine Drazen came out on top with 22.5% of the vote, over second-place finisher Bob Tiernan, who got 17.5%. So without a runoff, Drazen is the nominee with under 23% of the vote. And if you want to compare raw vote totals from the primaries, the Democrats had 491,000 and the Republicans had 378,000. I don't put much weight on primary vote totals, but if you do, those numbers actually seem in line with expectations. Now, as for Betsy Johnson, the independent candidate, she had to gather enough signatures to make the ballot, and she was able to do so. And one other thing about Betsy Johnson is she was a Democrat prior to 2021. She was viewed as more moderate and has since left the Democratic Party. Let's move down here and see how this race is rated. All three sites, the Cook Political Report, Inside Elections, and Larry Sabato have it as a toss-up. My most recent rating at the beginning of the month was Lean Democratic, but this is definitely a pure toss-up at this point. For most of this video, I am going to focus mostly on Tina Kotek versus Christine Drazen. Betsy Johnson has waned in the polls as of late, and it appears she has largely fallen out of this race. So Oregon has not elected a Republican governor since 1982. And that is the longest active drought for a Republican. But one other fun fact to consider is, since that 1982 election, although Democrats have won every one of them, only one time have they gotten at least 52% of the vote. So there have been a lot of competitive elections. The Republicans have just come up short every time. And in this particular election... Given that it is a three-way race, technically, it does make things more complicated. Betsy Johnson used to be a Democrat, so I would think most of the people supporting her would rather support Tina Kotek over Christine Drazen. Not all of them, just most of them. Christine Drazen is probably going to be too scary for a lot of hardcore Democrats in Oregon, especially in Portland. But I do suspect a lot of independents, swing voters, and even some Democrats are kind of tired of one-party control, and they would want to shake things up and actually try to elect a Republican for once. So it is up in the air right now. It can definitely go either way. And we can go down here and take a look at the campaign finance. And this is actually kind of close between all three candidates. Tina Kotek comes out on top, but even Betsy Johnson, the independent, she's not that far behind Christine Drazen. And we can go down here and take a look at how the counties are trending on a presidential level. I did do this for my Oregon Senate deep dive, so you can take a look at that video if you're interested. But this shows us that 57.4% of the population lives in eight counties that are solid Democratic, and those voted for the Democrat for president in the last three elections. On the other end, 27.9% of the population lives in 24 counties that are solid Republican, and those voted for the Republican in the last three presidential elections. Another 12.8% of the population lives in two counties that are new Democratic. And those are defined as having voted for Mitt Romney, Donald Trump the first time, but then flipping and voting for Joe Biden two years ago. And there's another two counties that are trending Republican, and those voted for Barack Obama the first time, but then flipped and voted for Donald Trump both times. So on a glance, this does seem like it's a seriously blue state, but we can go down here and look at some of these counties. And for reference, Joe Biden did win Oregon two years ago with over 56% of the vote, and that's good enough for a 16-point margin. And remember, the shading does not indicate margins. It just indicates if they voted for the Democrat or for the Republican for president in the last one, two, or three elections. But we can hover over any of these counties and actually take a look at those margins. And let's start with the most populous county, which is Multnomah County. And that has Portland in it. And as expected, that went really huge for Joe Biden. He got over 79% of the vote. Donald Trump got under 18%. 
And over the last three elections, that has trended even farther to the left. So if a Republican wants to have any chance at winning Oregon, there's plenty of votes that they could flip in this county. Now, some of these counties outside of Multnomah County, such as Washington County, that has a lot of the outer suburbs of Portland. And as you can see, that has also clearly trended toward the left over the last decade. Clackamas County, that's another one with a decent amount of vote. But Joe Biden still won that county by 11 points. Marion County, which has the capital of Salem, that's one of those new Democratic counties that flipped and voted for Joe Biden last time, just by about one point. These two lighter red counties, those are the counties that actually flipped and voted for Donald Trump both times. The only problem there is not many people live in those counties. So what about the rest of these red counties? Well, most of them are very deep red, and most of them don't have many people living in them. And even the wide margins in these eastern counties, they're no match for that deep blue vote in and around Portland. Some of these counties do have much more in common with neighboring Idaho, and there have even been some efforts for them to try to leave the state of Oregon. So state politics are different than national politics. So we can take this information and compare it to the 2018 election for governor. And in this race, Kate Brown had about 50% of the vote, and Newt Bueller had almost 44%. Let's take a look at Multnomah County. So it went 79% for Joe Biden, but only 74% for Kate Brown. It might not seem like much of a difference, but 5% in a county that has a ton of population in it, that's going to matter on the statewide margins. Even Clackamas County flipped and voted red. And if we click over here, we can actually take a look at the shading so we can see the margins. And this makes the state look not as blue as it was before, but it's still clear that the Republicans would have to do even better if they actually want to win a statewide election. And let's move on to YouTube and take a look at their channels. Here's Tina Kotex, and these are pretty much all ads on here. So take a look at some of these if you'd like. And here's Christine Drazen's channel. She also has quite a lot of ads as well as a few media appearances. And if you're curious, here is Betsy Johnson's channel. She also has some ads as well as some campaign and media appearances. How about their official campaign websites? Here is Tina Kotex if you want to see where she stands on the issues or shop at her store. And here is Christine Drazen's site if you want to see where she stands on the issues, get some more background about her or donate to her campaign. And here is Betsy Johnson's channel if you want to read about her, take a look at her events or donate to her campaign. So how about any debates? Well, we can get on Wikipedia for that because there's actually been five of them. And I give all three of these candidates a lot of credit. As far as I know, that's the most debates I've seen this campaign season. I've watched at least three of these debates, and they were good. They discussed a lot of issues. It was nice to see the three of them on stage going at it. So the links are here if you want to watch any of those, and I do recommend at least watching one of them. And that takes us to the endorsements. Here are Tina Kotex. She has Joe Biden, she has Barack Obama, and a healthy mix of other elected officials, newspapers, and organizations. And how about Christine Drazen's endorsements? Well, she has Glenn Youngkin and Larry Hogan, and she's got a bunch of her own organizations as well. And how about Betsy Johnson's endorsements? Johnson does have a mix of Democrats and Republicans, so that is nice to see her get some cross-party support. And that takes us down to the polling. Well, right now in the aggregate on Real Clear Politics, Christine Drazen is leading by 2.4%, 38.4 to 36.0. Betsy Johnson's at 15.4. And if we look at this graph here, it was a close three-way race back in the early summer. But in the last couple of months, Betsy Johnson's support has kind of fizzled, and it's become a battle between Drazen and Kotek. So let's go down to the individual polls. Some of these are Democrat or Republican-aligned pollsters. The most recent two do show Christine Drazen with a slight lead of one or two points. There's an internal poll here from the Tina Kotek campaign that shows her ahead by only two points. And most of these other polls from August to September show Drazen with a slight edge. And Betsy Johnson's support has kind of went from the low to mid-20s down to the low to mid-teens. So the question for me is, who are the Betsy Johnson voters going to vote for when it comes down to it? Are they going to stick with Betsy Johnson even though it seems like she has no chance? Are they going to come home and vote for Tina Kotek so they can stop Christine Drazen? Or are they going to become unmotivated and sit out the election? But let's move on and see how these poll results compare to four years ago. And in that race, in the aggregate, Kate Brown was at 44%. Newt Bueller was just under 40%. Good enough for a 4.3% margin. Brown actually won by almost 6.5%, so the polls did underestimate her support just a little bit. 
but I think that is largely to the undecided voters making up their minds at the very end. And finally, let's get on Predict It and take a look at the market. And this has the Republican Party, Christine Drazen, at 55 cents. Tina Kotek, Democratic Party, is at 51 cents. Betsy Johnson, the Independent, is all the way down at 1 cent. We can see on this graph, Tina Kotek was in the lead for quite a while. But over the last one to two months, this race has narrowed up and become a dead heat. So what is the conclusion here? Well, it is very hard to say, given there are three candidates in this race. The Independent used to be a moderate Democrat. That makes things very complicated. Oregon is generally a very blue state, so it's hard to say Tina Kotek is not going to have a built-in advantage. But there's a lot of factors this time that legitimately give Christine Drazen a chance. For one, it's an open seat. And number two, it's a red-leaning year. And most of the standard issues of crime and inflation, those are going to benefit Drazen. And more local issues such as homelessness, that's going to hurt Tina Kotek a little bit in my opinion. And without having elected a Republican in so long and one-party control in Oregon, I can see a lot of voters in the middle being kind of exhausted. They want to try something new and they'd be willing to vote at least for Betsy Johnson. But I think a lot of them might be willing to give Christine Drazen a try. She comes off as non-threatening. She seems to be competent in the debates. Yes, she does have to defend herself on the abortion issue. That is an issue that is not going to help Republicans in Oregon. There's been relentless attacks about that. If it wasn't for that issue, I think Christine Drazen would be likely to win this election. She has been leading narrowly in the polls. The big question is what happens with the late-breaking, undecided voters and the Betsy Johnson voters when it comes time to actually vote. Usually independent candidates get less support when the time comes. A lot of people, I think, want to support their candidate when it comes to telling a pollster. But when they're in that voting booth and they know their candidate has no chance, a bunch of them will probably decide to go to their backup choice. So I think it's going to be a very close race. Tina Kotek, I don't really think she has a lot of appeal. I've heard it would be like a third term of Kate Brown. And I could see enough Oregon voters being tired of that. And even if Christine Drazen wins... It's not going to be a Republican-controlled legislator. She's going to have to work across the aisle. And maybe that's what voters are looking for in Oregon. I'm anxious to see the polls in the final week. And then we'll see who has momentum going into November 8th. Anyway, that is a deep dive into this Oregon governor's race. Let me know in the comments. Are you following this race? And what do you think the margin will be? Let me know down below. And if you enjoy this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.